Hello, hello, my name is Maria Loram and welcome to my channel. I make functional ceramics intended for interior design. I love ceramics, I love glazes, I love art. So in this channel, I'm talking about my life as an artist. I'm talking about ceramics and glazes as well. I think this video falls under category of glazes and technology or bad uses of technology and bad uses of glazes. I came out with this topic when I was brainstorming different ideas for reels and I was thinking, oh, what if I do something like I ask ChatGPT to create five glaze recipes and here's what I got. Imagining something completely crazy and uh, unpredictable and unexpected or whatever. Spoiler alert, the results are a little bit boring, but we're going to talk about them. I'm going to look at the recipes that ChatGPT gave me. I'm going to look at the style chart. I'm going to try to explain the results to the best of my ability. To begin with, what I did, I asked ChatGPT Model 01, uh, which is supposed to be a smarter one. It's not the smartest one compared to the version of Pro where you have to pay 200 bucks. This is February 2025. Maybe it's going to get cheaper at some point. It's smarter than the tree version and it's smarter than ChatGPT4. So I sent a prompt without any explanation, without any prerequisites, without uploading the glaze textbook into the ChatGPT. I asked, can you make five recipes of neutral matte glaze for cone six? Then make five recipes of rough textured sculptural glaze for cone six. Then make five textural special effect glazes for cone six. I want them to be not too glossy and fit the wabi-sabi aesthetics. As a result, it gave me a bunch of different recipes. A lot of the materials I just didn't have because they were unusual. So I asked them again if they could send me different recipes or modify those a little bit just to make sure that I have those materials. And I selected the ones that were just like the easiest to make, that made the most sense based on the formula. They did get to be pretty repetitive, mostly because of, I excluded some of the materials that I didn't have. And so like dolomite and nephron cyanide is appearing quite a bit in my glazes, but I also suspect that a lot of mud glazes just out there fall into those categories and have those proportions. I included something really cool, and it's that I applied one of my favorite slips on top of those glazes and also some of my favorite lavas. So you can see how slips look on glazes and how lavas look on glazes. Nothing particularly crazy, but the, just the warning, this is what you get if you just ask ChatGPT directly to make glaze recipes for you. Doesn't work, <laughs> or at least doesn't work the way you expect. Let's take a look at what we got. But first of all, I do want to say that I hope that this format I'm going to get going on a regular basis. I hope I'm going to give you guys all the exciting recipes. The next video that I'm planning to film about glazes is my review of the R2O to RO flux ratios that I have made for a set of lab glazes. I think it's a very exciting set of test tiles. I'm pretty sure that not a big fraction of YouTube people actually know what I'm talking about, but I'm sure that those who know, they'll find me and I'll find it at least curious. So stay tuned. I'm definitely going to add on to that. I picked seven recipes. Four were supposed to be matte and three were supposed to be textured. Okay, I'm going to be showing it to you like this, but also I'm going to put the screenshot of them on the screen. I tested all the glazes on the white clay bottom. So that's recipe number one. And also on a dark clay body. That's also recipe number one, but on a black clay body. If you look at the style chart, this first recipe falls very, very low onto the glossy region. And it also has titanium dioxide that we can see little crystals forming, but the glaze itself is glossy. It's just that the crystals on top that come either from titanium dioxide or from the fact that the glaze is so low on the map, it really covers the whole surface. And technically it might even count as matte, but I don't think that can be counted as matte just because how, how glossy it is. So I would say in terms of how matte it is, this recipe is a six, maybe four out of 10, I would say, just because it's not matte at all. And I wouldn't expect it to be matte given where it is on the map. To be honest, none of the seven recipes were on the map where they were supposed to be on the matte region. So it's either the question towards ChatGPT or Stolp. I suspect ChatGPT is a bigger problem here. Otherwise, uh, ChatGPT did a good job. It used the uh, common ingredients, nephron cyanide, grossly borate, which I'm not very happy about, but I got a bunch from Laguna. Apparently, they bought out a lot of uh, grossly borate, so there's still some. And then there's also dolomite, whiting. So a little bit of calcium, a little bit of magnesium. Boron levels are fine. Just like in general, everything looks fine. Even our R2O to RO ratio is 0.2 to 0.8, which is acceptable. So all in all, good glaze, but all the crazy mattness, which is like kind of rough, uh, comes from titanium dioxide. So like all these little crystals 
are coming from there. And the fun note here is two of my favorite lava glazes, barium based and strontium based, applied to this map place. I think it's a decent non map place. And here is the slit that I applied to my desk tile on top of the map. Supposedly, if there is a glaze, the slip is supposed to stick a little bit better, but this one has so much alumina that it just came off. Of course, uh, this kind of technique could be used for sculptural uh, pieces, but it's not particularly useful if you are producing functional wear. There's also one textile that broke, uh, but actually, yeah, I like the, how it came out. Like, that's a really nice beige mat. Okay, and we're off to mat glaze number two. I love how ChatGPT, like if I look at the descriptions, it says satin matte with velastonite. This formula yields a warm eggshell satin matte surface. Indeed, there's a velastonite, there's custard feldspar, there's tall PPK, uh, ferrofree, apparently for reducing the temperature. The main problem that I have with it is that it's not matte at all, I guess. It's not even satin. It kind of is satin-ish, but I feel like it is a little bit too glossy for my taste. Of course, it is really difficult to check it. Uh, just like this on the screen. It's pleasant. It's pleasant. It's not, it's not as glossy as the gloss would be, but it's pleasant. I did not like how it came out on the black surface because I feel like it's even glossier. So I think if I put a very thick layer of it, then it's going to get more matte than if it's on a thin layer. I might call it satin. What's actually fun though, and this is where it's clear that if I apply a very thick layer of it, then it's going to get like kind of whitish matte very milky whitish matte is this test style and this is again my lava glazes applied to the matte glaze that ChatGPT gave me so this ChatGPT recipe number two there is matte underneath and it actually looks like matte so maybe just a thicker layer of this recipe would work and then also this one that is the slip applied to the test style on top of the matte glaze and again the slip came off quite a bit, so I would say it's not quite functional unless you're okay with it falling off. And glaze number three, ChatGPT called Dolomite Matte Creamy Neutral, often used for matte results with slight cream coloration. And this one indeed is a really good matte with slight cream coloration. I don't have any problems with this one, except the R2O to RO ratio is 0.15 to 0.85. If we look at this glaze on a stop chart, then it's not going to fall into matte region. One of the explanations that I got for this is that for cone six, the style chart works a little bit differently. So the whole chart moves a bit. And then also because style created his chart based on the R2 to RO 0.3 to 0.7. If we look at 0.15 to 0.85, then it's going to be a little bit different. That's a really good example of how it's different. Let's take a look at it. So I think it's hard to notice, but just believe me that this one feels matte. And it looks matte and it's really, I think it's a very pleasant milky texture. That's really nice to touch. Like if I had a cup with this glaze, I would be, I would be very excited. It didn't work as well as I would want on a black clay body, just because the variegation of different layers is too big for it. Like I don't want it to be that dramatic. I want it to be a little bit more stable. So kind of a little bit more uniform. But it kind of goes from matte clear to an opaque white, I would say, just depending on the level. And of course, matte clear is a little bit of a weird term, but it looks like matte clear to me. And in general, I would give this glaze 7 out of 10. The only problem is the flux ratio, that it might not be as food safe as it could be, not as stable, not as durable. So I would use the lemon test to check how durable it is and if it's stable, but otherwise it's a really good glaze. And very briefly, my lava on top of it. Also, not a huge difference. And then also, yeah, slip. Uh, this came out like a lot, a lot, but I think it's fun. I think if you want to create very thin layers of stuff that comes out of your sculptures, good slip. Recipe number four is called Neutral Satin Semi Matte. A balanced cone six semi matte that often looks softly matte in oxidation. The R2O to RO flux ratio is almost 0.4 to 0.6, which isn't that great and not as durable. What's interesting though is, is that it is quite matte. Definitely crawl quite a bit. I would personally explain it by a very high alumina level. Okay, this is the same glaze, but on a black or dark clay pipe. I would say that this is pretty matte. I would give it six out of 10 for the 
crawling, but in case you like crawling, that might be a really good one. But I would not use it because of those crawliness. I think I would just like, keep looking for a different recipe um, because I don't want to fix mistakes of the shitty glazes. Uh, the chat GPT gave me. And this is the a couple of lavas. Those lavas are kind of crawls. Uh, that's explained by very high silica and alumina levels. And this is a slip on top of this mat. Which I think actually, compared to the other slip, it doesn't stick out as much. All right, so we're moving on to glaze number five where we have three recipes left. And those are all textured recipes. They all came out to be absolutely perfect clear gloss. <laughs> Surprise, surprise. Okay, let's take a look at them. I did not trust ChatGPT in it, but... Okay, he called this crater lava-like mat. The glaze intentionally forms craters and rock bubbles on the surface. It's good for sculptural pieces where you want the pitted lava rock look. This is why people, you need to buy my course on glazes and not listen to ChatGPT. It suggested to add silicon carbide, but it also suggested that I could add 1% of baking soda sodium bicarbonate. I was skeptical at first, and rightly so. Let's take a look. So that is my perfectly bubbled lava glaze. Joking, there's like literally not a single bubble. But I was really curious. I'm like, well, <laughs> sodium bicarbonate, it is. And yeah, as you would expect, it did not work. Super clear. Okay, well, if this is that glossy, that means that everything else was actually quite mad, to be honest. Okay, otherwise, this recipe is quite shitty in all the other ways. R2O to RO flux ratio is 40, almost 45 to uh, 55, and uh, nothing else is particularly exciting about it. So, this is the lava. If you look at it really closely, then you can totally see that there is just a very glossy glaze underneath. And the more glossy the glaze is underneath, the more it melts the more the lava also melts and the fewer the bubbles and the more the melty look we get. This one, is it even that one? Okay, so here all the slip just fell. So there's no slip left, just a little bit and like big patches of the glaze. I think I'm getting tired too because they're all the same. Like literally, I would hope that they're going to be at least a little bit different, but I am kind of disappointed. Glaze number six, I think ChatGPT in general just doesn't have much uh, imagination. Uh, Glaze number six, custard feldspar, ferrofruit, dolomite, ball clay, silicon, rough mat. It's not even a mat. It's more mat again if we apply a thick layer, but still it is pretty cool. So basically, I, I feel like I don't even want to talk about them anymore. However, uh, what one good about it is that the clay or slip actually stick to the surface. So remember the very first slips that I showed you? This one was pretty decent. Yeah, like that, that counts. Like this one, I think might make it to be worth even reviewing. So what's interesting about this glaze is that it's super, super far on the map, far and down. So it might be, that might be one of the reasons why it actually stuck to it because there was a lot of silica compared to all the other glazes and that very high alumina slip, somehow that glaze underneath let it melt a little bit better. So that would be my explanation. All right. And the very, very last one, semi-dry lava for Umi glaze, glaze number seven. Again, that's the reason of why I would not really ChatGPT, but it said similar to lava created ways, we will add additional chorus inclusions to add extra tactile effect. What it asked for me is to add chorus grow five to ten percent. I did it, but I also did it to all the other glazes to check the effect. And there's only one glaze where it actually worked. Like this one, I'll, I'll show it to you just so that you can see. Honestly, I do not see any, any, any. Grow. So I think that is pretty useless, but really good clear. I mean, if you're looking for clear, pretty reasonable clear, actually. Uh, it did crackle a little bit, but the R2O to RO ratio is 0.3 to 0.7. So, no. What's cool about it is the lava. How in this lava glaze, again, it's really hard to see, but the clear kind of popped up from behind the lava and let the lava melt a little bit more and kind of even help to re reveal the bubbles. So, I actually really like the combination of uh, strontium lava and this specific glaze. In the last test style of the series is the slip. That's basically almost it for this review. But the only thing that I wanted to mention is that I did add sand to my glaze. So that is some sand. And uh, you could totally see the particles. You could totally see the sand particles into this glaze. I've never added sand to my glaze before. It kind of didn't make sense. I mean, it's not going to melt for sure. But this sand had kind of black particles. So I could actually notice them after firing. I understand when I add sand to the clay body or to slip for a groggy effect, but apparently 
It also works for the glaze. I do think that if I reduce the water content or if I added suspension agents so that the sand stays suspended in the glaze, then the results would have been a little bit more impressive. Uh, well, now sand kind of tends to sink down to the bottom and so it's really hard to actually apply it. But if there is a way by either reducing the water content or by adding suspension agents to make the sand float, then I think it's a really good way to add some texture to your glaze. All right, this was um, my first review of my test tiles. I would say this was probably the most boring style batch I've ever gotten, the most random and the most boring because I, I mean, in general, when you test mud glazes and gloss glazes, the test styles without colorants come out to be boring, but this one in particular, I'm just like, Ugh. so that was not very fun uh, for me. I hope it wasn't fun for you either, but I do believe that there's like so much more that I can say about different test batches. I also think that it's just part of the process. You know, sometimes you get boring test styles, sometimes you don't. And if ceramics people would show all their boring test styles to everyone, then maybe some people would potentially avoid making mistakes. For example, using ChatGPT as a creator of your glazes. I had lots of doubts that this idea would be, you know, crazy good. And that was for a reason. It did not work. So congratulate me. I'm going to go get testing again this week and uh, hopefully I'll come up with something really cool. But uh, watch out for my lava glazes. They are really interesting. So let's keep in touch. Subscribe to this channel for more boring glaze reviews uh, and like this video. Whew. I mean, the only one I can blame is ChatGPT. I, and I don't even know how I'm going to film this reel anymore because it's not going to be viral anymore. So on the one hand, it's a good thing. That means that AI is not going to take over our jobs uh, as ceramicists because it can't even come up with a mad glaze. On the other hand, it would have been a lot simpler if it could give me like the actual real good mad glaze and told me the specific details about the firing and all that, that are not generic and drawn from, you know, random glaze sources online, but actually based on science. So thank you so much and stay tuned. I'll see you soon.